Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Monday Sit Rep. I'm your host, C.B. Harris. Welcome to all of you diplomats of defense and ambassadors of arms. On today's episode, we're going to talk about these supposed loopholes that anti-gun people always talk about. The internet loophole, the gun show loophole, and now another one. Just like the others, it doesn't exist either. Also on Life or Death Files, a Savannah George man and a disabled veteran protects himself from people impersonating police officers. And finally on what's new, we have some new ammo available for your AK-47 hunting and self-defense ammo. All right, so gun show loophole, internet loophole. These are things that anti-gun people always like to talk about that they don't even really exist. And here's what bothers me is that the people who are putting this out, they know it doesn't exist. They know it's not real. They know what the facts are, but it doesn't fit their agenda. And they're hoping to, I guess, dupe people into believing that there's some lie out there that allows people to purchase firearm without any sort of background check whatsoever, that criminals can buy guns and that, you know, there's nothing that we can do about it. They can buy whatever they want, have it sent to their home, and nobody will be the wiser. And it's just not the case. Now, I bring this up because there's another type out there now that is showing up. There's a company called Guns TV, and they're going to be starting a, a, a I guess, a home shopping network-ish type thing for firearms. And so already people are saying, hey, now there's a TV loophole. You can buy a gun via the TV and nobody is the wiser. You can buy whatever you want and nobody will know that you purchased it. And it's just not the case. In fact, if I purchase something on the internet, if I'm on one of the auction sites or at a gun store that has their inventory listed online and I decide I want to purchase it, I actually go through more background check, more uh, bureaucracy to get that than I would just going down to my local gun, sh my local gun store. Because what happens is I decide that there's something I like. It's in, say, Georgia or in Indiana or something like that, and it's not the state I reside in. So what I have to do is I have to coordinate with them, make the purchase, um, and they do a background check on me. I have to make sure I have all the paperwork ready, and they do a background check on me, okay? Based on uh, just the information that I give them, yes. But th that's not the end of it. I then need to find a firearms dealer in my area, a licensed firearms dealer, who is willing to have that firearm shipped to them and then transferred to me, okay? So I've purchased it from somewhere else, but they're gonna do the transfer part. Well, I'm gonna have to pay them some money and they need to coordinate with the other gun dealer to make sure it all happens. That usually involves uh, verifying that they you know, are indeed a licensed dealer. The firearm gets shipped to them and when I go pick it up, I don't just pick it up. I have to pay for the transfer and then I wait for a background check again. Another background check is done to make sure I am who I say I am and that I am illegally allowed to own that firearm. So I'm surprised that the anti-gun people, they aren't all over this. They would love to have more background check. You would think that they would want all, uh, all transactions to take place just like this. And it's gonna be the same when you're purchasing via this uh, Guns TV as well. So I, I guess I just, uh, I'm really bothered by the fact that the people who are putting this out to the public, they know absolutely what the truth is, but it doesn't fit their agenda. So obviously they're gonna just put out there the most scary, I guess, uh, incident that could happen. Just criminals can buy whatever they want. That's what they wanna tell you. And that's what they want you to believe. Please don't believe it, don't buy it. Do the research yourself and find out the facts. So next on the life or death files, a disabled veteran protects himself using his firearm. So Savannah, Georgia resident, Lam Blake, he's a, he's a handicapped veteran, disabled veteran, and he was woken up in the wee hours of the morning. He actually has a surveillance camera outside of his home and he saw what appeared to be two police officers knocking on his door. Well, then it got, I guess, a little insistent and they decided that they're gonna break in. So these are obviously not police officers. 
Uh, I want to quote him exactly here. It says, uh, I immediately grabbed my 9mm Smith & Wesson M&P, loaded it up, and waited for them to come all the way in. So he obviously, something was off, and he knew uh, that they were obviously not police officers. And uh, a good plug for Smith & Wesson there, too, by the way. Um, he was able to scare them off. I guess they were, they thought he was just going to be, you know, I guess a, a willing victim, or at least a, um, a pushover victim, and he wasn't. So uh, he actually calls them cowards. They ran away. They took some shots at him as they were leaving. He shot back at them. Uh, nobody was hit. Uh, the only casualty, I guess, were uh, some kitchen walls and the bedroom walls. But other than that, uh, nobody was injured during this. Uh, maybe somebody's underwear. I'm not real sure about that. Uh, I would rather not find out, to be honest with you. But uh, he actually does quote and says, he actually does say, quote, my gun saved my life. So these are people who are, they're going to be charged, uh, when they're caught, they're going to be charged with robbery, breaking and entering, assault with a deadly weapon, and a felony impersonation of a police officer. So just one more charge tacked on there. And you know what? I This is, this is a tough situation. You expect police officers to be uh, out for your best interest. Really, you expect that they're there to uh, help you with a problem. Uh, if they're knocking on your door, especially if they're getting very insistent, you would assume you're you're hoping that you know it's a mistaken identity, don't know what it is, but uh, it'll all get worked out in the end. Obviously, in this case, that wouldn't have happened. It could have turned out very differently for Mr. Blake, and I'm very thankful that it did not. So next on what's new, uh, new ammunition for your AK-47. This is self-defense or hunting ammunition. So, what's new? So the AK-47 is becoming a lot more popular of a platform in the United States. Uh, I don't know if it's quite as popular as the AR-15, but it is definitely up there. A lot of people have AK-47s. One good thing about the AK-47 is it is a decent hunting round. Uh, I'm not saying it's the perfect thing, but it is, it's okay. It's pretty decent for this, depending on what it is you're after. Um, you're going to have to be a little bit closer to whatever it is, but um, it is a decent round for this. Now, I live in the West, and in the state where I live, uh, big game, you cannot use any caliber smaller than .25 inches. So, a 762 by 39 fits the bill for sure. 556 doesn't make it. So, uh, really, you wouldn't want to use a 556 for anything, you know, large anyway. You wouldn't want to use it for mule deer, elk, or anything like that anyway. Um, 762 by 39 you know, you, it may not be perfect in every situation. And again, you're going to have to be a lot closer for it to be very effective. But this type of ammo will definitely help. There are a few others out there. There are a few other... Um, hollow point or expanding ammunition things out there. Uh, this is 124 grain copper bullet. It expands into three large petals. It says that it expands out to approximately the size of a quarter. Now obviously this is uh, this is the company's statistics and you know data and the real world may show things a little bit different but it is supposed to be some very good ammunition and I would hope it is because it is pretty expensive. It's $57 for a box of 20 you're talking pretty close to three bucks a round. Uh, good hunting ammunition can be very expensive. You definitely, you want to get out, test it, make sure it's going to work with your firearm. Uh, but after that, you know, that's kind of something you save for those special occasions, I guess. But uh, it is uh, 2,270 feet per second, and it is compatible with your suppressor. So if you're in a state where you can hunt with a suppressor, Boy, this is a good combination. Maybe you ought to check this out. Again, G2 Research, and this is the Ripout Round. Okay, so this is Ripout Round in 762 by 39. I hope you guys enjoyed the show today. If you did, be sure to like and share it. I always appreciate it when you guys do that. If you're not a subscriber, you want to become one, you want to see more shows just like this one, go ahead, find that subscribe button, give it a big old click, and that makes you a diplomat of defense or ambassador of arms. Then come back next Monday for another Monday sit rep. And be sure to come back this Thursday for Thursday's training tip. On this, this week, we're going to be finishing the Kydex holster that we designed last week. We went through all the prep work and everything. Check out that video and then come back and watch this Thursday as we try to finish that holster up. Charlie Bravo out. Take care and be safe.